Hi and welcome back to Holistic Developer Channel. I'm Anna, the host of this channel. And in this case, I will be talking about my experience that I had at App Academy Coding Bootcamp. And overall, it was a disappointing experience. And I talked about, kind of, I gave a review of App Academy in a separate video with kind of four categories, pros and cons. So if you're interested, you can start there. And this is the continuation. This is part two. There won't be practically a structure here. It will be a lot of renting, a lot of just letting out everything what I have inside. So if that's something that you are not in the mood of listening, if you're looking for something else, please stop this video and do something else. Go and do something more positive do something more valuable with your time. But if you want to hear what was my experience, what was disappointing about my experience, you're welcome to stay. So I will start with um, the fact that instructors did not know the material or they were not preparing. So there were a lot of times where um, I will ask clarification questions. One of the first thing that they're doing, they will go and Google it. And before you say that that's naturally what you do as well, like when I don't know something, I go and Google it. And true, I do that all the time. And you might argue that they want to teach you that skill, showing you by example. The thing is that there's a difference between showing you an example to follow and actually not knowing what's going on. Because early on, the first few weeks of our cohort, the, the cohort that I was part of at App Academy, we had an instructor that I could truly see that he knows the answer, but he wants to show you, he wants to teach the students the skill of going and researching by yourself versus the other instructors who truly didn't know what it is and they were experiencing that, like searching and finding out what it is. And this is a skill that is important and a skill that needs to be taught. However, for the amount of money that we were paying, those instructors should have known the material. And there's, yeah, you sh there's no way that you can know everything. I, I don't uh, disagree with that. But the material that you're teaching, uh, it doesn't take it away. Like, I'll ask something about like docker like how is this working what is this supposed to, what is this and the instructor won't be able to answer and they will try to answer it and the result will be something really confusing and a lot of times it actually will be something that is not true um, so there were cases where something was explained and i know that was not correct I know that because I have experienced coding and even though the bootcamp and the things that I was learning, it was not exactly what my experience was in, I, I was shocked by the fact that the information that they were sharing it was not correct. And the entire like student base that was in the cohort took that as the correct information. And in those cases, I didn't want to call, call out on the instructor and say, look, you, you're not saying the right thing. It's not correct. So what I was doing in those cases, I was just asking clarification questions, asking, oh, am I understanding that correct? And putting in the different words and kind of getting to the point that actually what they said was not correct. One of the things like how we got to point about instructors is that... <sighs> At the beginning, we had two instructors, like we were 25 students in a cohort for six months and you get two instructors. Um, and they were taking turns. One instructor teaches, I don't know, today or tomorrow or the topic. I don't know what was the division, but they were taking turns. And honestly, one of the instructors that we had, it was his third time that he was teaching. And the other instructor was his first time. So the one that taught for three times, um, he was a previously graduated from App Academy. So he was able to express himself, even if he was not as experienced as the other instructor, he didn't have real world experience, he was able to teach things. And that was okay. When the other instructor was 
explain, explaining things. He was really nervous. He would, would not be able to express his thought clearly and that will be confusing and just not a good combination for a lot of people who don't know how to code and they don't know what coding is actually. So I kind of stayed um, with App Academy and with that cohort because I was like, okay, one instructor is good, is decent, he's able to explain, he's able to actually teach, and that was okay. Uh, and things changed at App, App Academy and that instructor was promoted and we got another instructor who just graduated like two months prior. He graduated from App Academy with no real experience and he was going to teach us how to code. And to me, that was mind blowing. Like how in the world a person who just learned how to code is going to teach other people how to code. And maybe you would say that he has the freshest experience. He just went through this. He's able to, to walk you through the motions easier and stuff like that. Maybe it's true, but for me, as an experienced person who already coded, the examples or the questions that didn't make sense for me, uh, that I wanted to clarify, he was not able to answer because he didn't know. And to me, it's like, still doesn't, like, doesn't click in my mind, like, how in the world and a program that costs 31000 for six months is being taught by a student who doesn't know the things. It's just like, and how the structure of App Academy or the day it is that you get in, in the morning, eight o'clock, um, ask questions for five, 10 minutes. Then you watch videos for that topic that will be that day. Um, the videos can be somewhere from half an hour to, I don't know, three hours for that day. Um, and you watch the videos, like one video, um, then stop and ask questions. Next video, stop and was ask questions. And watching that video and asking clarification questions, and <laughs> the instructors are not able to answer. They just don't know the answer. They don't know the material. And that was not the case all the time, but in the majority of cases, they didn't know the answers. They didn't know the material. So, and then the second part of the day is you usually partner up with somebody, you do pair programming with somebody, somebody from your cohort, and you have instructors, instructions on like examples, like or the project you're doing and you can walk through it. And basically, the, the instructors or the TAs you're getting, they're not truly persons there to teach you, right? They are there to answer the questions. And the people who are teaching you the material in the videos, they are not around to ask questions. You cannot ask clarifications. And they're just like in the this floating state of not understanding what's going on, what is true, what is not true. So you, you are your own instructor and teacher and you're the student and you have to research stuff and make sense, put the pieces together. That is okay um, at a certain level, a certain percentage. Like it's okay for that to be the case for let's say maybe 10, 15% because it's a skill that you need to learn and need to develop, but it's not a skill that um, it's not, it's impossible to kind of, I don't know, it's just, for me, it doesn't seem right that you're paying an insane amount of money and the expectation is that you will learn by yourself, that you will make sense of things by yourself because the instructors that you're giving, they're not able to, to teach you. Um, so going back to the fact that we got an instructor that was not not experienced at all teaching a cohort of people who want to be experienced software engineers who know and want to actually take that back who want to know how to code who want to be software engineers being taught by somebody who just like by a student um is not a good experience so 
at that time when that happened, I didn't have a work, nobody had a, a way out. The situation was that um, that change, like when we lost the decent um, instructor who was able to teach, it was already past that time when you're able to stop App Academy and just leave without paying anything. And to the point where we got that instructor switching, it was that you were supposed to pay to that point after that you're supposed to pay for every hour, I don't know, $300 or something around that. So it was an insane amount of money that you were going to lose if you just decide to, to leave. So that was the situation. Um, real example, when I will ask something like, what is this? Like, try help me understand this. And because the instructor didn't know what it is, they will say, oh, don't worry, it won't be part of the assessment. And that was just killing me. Like I was hearing that all the time. Don't worry, that won't be part of the assessment. And I, I, I just like, it was boiling inside me. Like, dude, I'm paying $31,000 to learn this thing. I don't freaking care about that assessment that much because it's a skill that I want to know, the knowledge that I want to have when I'm coming out of this thing. So what was stopping me at that point from just blowing out, it was just, I didn't want to be kicked out and forced to pay that 31,000 immediately. And my idea was that, okay, I will let this go and I'll ask to be allowed to look or shadow other cohorts and go through that material with the hope that I will be able to get the answers that I need. And the reason is that, my reasoning there is that we had people who were deferred because they didn't pass an assessment. And one person in particular, he was deferred like four times. And his comment was like, truly, Anna, um, the instructors that we had in our cohort and all the other four cohorts that I've been, like actually total four cohorts, like he said, the instructors that are for March cohort is the worst. And he got into a cohort that the instructor was amazing. Everything makes sense. Like it was just like, and I had moments when I was thinking like, do I don't pass the assessment on purpose to be deferred? And it's like, no, I won't do that. I will pass all the assessment. And at the end, I'll ask to be deferred for a month or two to learn those modules that I really didn't get much like Python horrible like I didn't get Python Docker I tried my best but it like no it was too fast not enough instructors not enough clarifications not enough support to get that in my head and I'll stop there because um, I need to calm down before I do something else and I'll continue Okay, so I got a little bit carried away with <laughs> how I felt and so on. So I believe now I'm more calm. So hopefully this will be okay because I did film uh, the following part, which was over 30 minutes. And yeah, I won't do that. So this is kind of a retake me uh, more in a stable <laughs> state of emotional affairs. Let's say that. So I think where I stopped with the previous video, it was that I was hoping that I will be able to shadow other cohorts to be able to um, fill the gaps on the knowledge, uh, in the knowledge that I had. And another hope it was that those other cohorts will have instructors that will be more suited to explain the material. Because the reality it was that in our cohort, as I already said, it was not the case. Um, the instructor that we had, they didn't have the material, nor were they any invested in knowing the material. Because if you want it, uh, you would prepare uh, into knowing what will be the topic of the day <laughs> or knowing the material and stuff like that because there were cases that yeah they didn't know what it is we'll have an objective that we needed to know and uh, there was a flaw in the curriculum 
uh, it's an objective, but there is nothing in the material that was taught about that. And we'll say, okay, this is an objective. What, like, where is the information? And there won't be nothing, and they won't be able to provide the answers. So uh, I want to be clear that uh, it's this is not against the people at App Academy because they're just probably doing the best they can. Even sometimes, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they do, I don't know. But the reality was that um, I didn't see those that interest to be um, for our mentors um, or TAs because, as I said, they could have prepared. If I were to take an example, other cohorts, um, the TAs will what they will do, they will put together kind of this the, a guide or a prep guide for the assessment for the next week. Uh, they will kind of summarize the key component, key information that you need to fully understand in order to kind of consider that you grasp the concept of the module. So people were doing extra stuff and that was not the case uh, for our cohort. So the expectation would have been for them to prepare for the material because as a teacher, you're not going to teach a class without actually knowing what is in the curriculum or knowing what you were teaching that day. Um, so that being said, one thing that I want to stress out is that I mentioned that we had instructors changed uh, kind of earlier earlier in the program and the TA that we got, it was somebody who just graduated probably maximum three months from their uh, cohort. And let's, let's assume he was the top of the class. He was really good at coding and stuff like that. The issue there was that he was teaching, we're supposed to teach and support a completely different stack. He was, he graduated a Ruby on Rails stack and he came in to our cohort to be a TA to teach JavaScript, to teach Python, to teach Docker, um, microservices and other things. And in his cohort and his curriculum, that was not part of it. So even that is like where those things fit a student who just finished, uh, graduated a boot camp, doesn't have real experience, is going to teach another group of students. And I would say maybe it's okay if you went through the same curriculum or through the same material and kind of know what needs to be presented. But in this case, he didn't know because it was completely different curriculum. Our curriculum was a new curriculum. And that was not okay. So like a lot of this small things that they were definitely not acceptable. On the same topic on recruiting, something that I I understand why the students are doing, uh, but I don't, I, I try to understand why App Academy is doing and other than the monetary reasons, I don't see what is the reason to do that. So even before our students or our the cohort finished the, the program, um, people were recruited and that is not okay, right? So, and I don't think that they were going to be discounted the price that they have to pay or anything like that. People who didn't had a chance to do their capstone project, that's kind of the project, the, corner store where you actually try to piece together all the information you gathered, you learned, and applying it to practice and see if you can do something, if you can code and stuff like that. People were recruited before they were getting to capstone project and they were not able to do the capstone project. And those people are teaching now other cohorts. So it's just like, again, I want to be calm and not do something that is un irrational because of me not understanding that. But that's definitely feels wrong. It definitely doesn't feel that it should be that way. 
So going back to what I started with is that I was hoping that I will get a chance to shadow um, other cohorts. So at that time when we graduated, we kind of were handed off to coaches and coaches were supposed to work with us meet on a weekly basis. So that was one of my asks for me to shadow a particular uh, cohort to get the modules where I felt that it was the worst on the curriculum, the worst on the uh, support that we got and the information that we got. And the reason was that there were a couple reasons. First, the curriculum started to be worse because a lot of people who previously were doing the curriculum, who previously were setting up everything, they were let go and were, I don't know, I, the rumors were that they were let go, but in reality, maybe not. So let's take um, let's take another route. Let's say they decided to leave by themselves and somebody else was doing the curriculum and the curriculum was like just not not there. So, so yeah, you have in the list that you learned Python, but in reality, you didn't learn Python. There is in the list that you learned Docker, but the information you got, it's like, it's not a good information. I didn't feel right <laughs> to put these things in my resume. Um, however, I was strongly advised by my coach to put it there. And that was one of the reasons. The other reasons that the TAs were not able to support that those models because they, they didn't have prior experience to it, they didn't know the curriculum. And the uh, I and the other thing it was that we know um, that other TAs, other cohorts were stronger. They had they were better equipped of explaining that uh, information. So that, that was my hope. And previously there were cases that people voluntarily asked to be deferred. So we had one student in our cohort who got somewhere to week 16 or something like that. I don't remember the weeks exactly. And he asked to be deferred to week 12, like a month, um, because he didn't feel that he got, got the the material that was presented for that month, he didn't feel that he understood it, so he asked to be deferred. He didn't. He was not. He didn't fail or something like that. So he was allowed to do that. Then there was another student that we had that was shadowing our cohort um, for a while, also on a couple of materials or modules that apparently that person needed to catch up on, or I don't know what is the reason. So I hope that that will be my case as well, that I will be allowed to do that. And I stated clearly that that won't stop me from doing the job search. That will be just me learning the modules that I needed. And that's usually in the morning. And in the afternoon, I'll continue with my contract obligations that I signed up with. The contract obligation is that I don't think I remember, I don't think if, the, I'm not sure if that was in the contract, but let's say it was in the contract and I deem, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it is in the contract. I need to, to revisit the contract, but the, the requirement that you have is to apply to 40 jobs every week to continue learning um, data structures, algorithms, to do interviews, to do mock-up interviews, to polish up your resume, to polish up your projects and work on other projects. So I I was intent on feeling that, but hoping that I will be allowed to do the shadowing. And the very first thing that I was told, I was told, no, that is not allowed. And I was like, how in the world that is not allowed if I saw that happening? And also plus to that, it's like we have four we are allowed four deferrals uh, before you get kicked out of uh, the program. So kind of, if I were to elaborate there, four deferrals means that you can fail your assessment four times before you're kicked out of the uh, of the program. And I, I didn't fail any of them. However, there was a case that where I was really close at failing one. I didn't fail any of them because I wanted to finish the program and see where are my gaps so I can shadow and kind of get to understand that, get to learn that better. So initially my my uh, coach said no, 
then I provided all the reasons. He understood uh, my view. I was clear and blunt to him with him saying that the coaches were, not the coaches, sorry, the TAs didn't do a good job at explaining what it is. The, the curriculum was really weak. Um, explained the situation and he said, yeah, he will revisit. He'll revisit and that was kind of the ev like every week it was dragged on, like week by week, like it passed one week or one month, it passed two months and nothing happened. He was he said, yes, uh, we uh, will allow you, uh, it will start next week or something like that, something along those lines and nothing happened. Uh, I was not allowed to do that. <sighs> Getting to coaching, right? Again, as I said, it's not against people. The, the people, the coaches and TAs are nice people. They are, I believe they're trying to do the best they can, but they are overworked or overbooked or, I don't know, spread too thin, if that will be the expression. Um, so imagine that every, every month there are about somewhere from 25 in the best case scenarios, like that was the size of the cohort when we were, maximum 25. Now I think it's 75 in the cohort, I, I don't know. Um, maximum from 25 people to, let's say, uh, worst case scenario, five people graduate, right? Every month, like those people are added to the coaches to, for them to coach. And they have to meet with them on a regular basis. They have to review everybody's resume, uh, provide feedback, uh, look at uh, projects and all like review the project and provide constructive feedback of what needs to be done for that person to kind of get to the next level, get to the level of being job ready. And in my case, sadly, it was that my coach, because maybe it was overbooked or not, I don't know, uh, he was not truly present. Like if we'll meet, like the question was like, like you get a survey every week and the question is like, do you need to meet your coach this week or not? And it's like, uh, in my mind, it's like, I'm paying for that. So yeah, definitely, I, I need to meet with a coach. And there were times where I will select that, yes, I need to meet with my coach. And no, nothing happens, like no schedule, nothing will be scheduled. Then there will be times, like even something is scheduled, we'll get on that phone and talk and it's like, yeah, sorry, I need to go to a different meeting. Or it's like, oh, uh, we'll get a really, it will be a really quick conversation about, okay, I see that you applied to so many, so many applications, you have so many interviews, uh, I think you have way too much and stuff like that. And uh, it will get to be a status call and not really a coaching session. And it will end at that. It will end like at 10 minutes or something like that. Uh, there were times that I actually had mock-up interviews it was one mock-up interview with my coach and he was not truly paying attention 100 percent of time because he w he was being slacked he was answering to slack notifications and so on so the idea of having a coach is great but in reality it's just the situation is that you don't really have one there was a point that i really appreciated what my coach did and i respect him for that my case was that because I had prior job experience, I was still applying to, I think, 25 jobs a week. I was allowed to do 25 jobs a week. A week. It resulted to be really insane in just about two weeks. I guess at that time I applied like 50 jobs and a lot of them were resulting in phone screens. A lot of them are resulting in coding challenge and on-site interviews. And it it just got out of control. I was not able to prepare for any interviews. And my coach allowed me to um, kind of not apply to more jobs, applications anymore, but just try to catch up with ones that I have. Um, but the other things that were not okay, it was that we had to prepare, let's say, an elevator pitch uh, about ourselves, like who we are, like, um, like who, the things that you answer, like tell me about yourself when you're in an interview. And that was supposed to be like a two minute video and we posted it somewhere and the coaches will review and kind of coach you on what you should say and what shouldn't you say. And guess what? 
I uploaded, I did what it was needed in time, it was not reviewed. And how do I know it's that you see how many views you have and there were no views at all. I didn't had any feedback or status update from my coach on that. Same is kind of true on my resume. Um, it was not, uh, it's, my resume was not reviewed. I think it was one case that I prompted uh, my coach to check a version of a resume that I needed to send for a specific position. And he looked at it and he said, that's good. It's really good. And before I send it to, <laughs> to the job a poster, I, I decided to, to go over it again. And I noticed there were a lot of grammar errors there. And also there were actually one bullet point that was Lauren Possum and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, so if my coach actually reviewed that, let's assume that, how well did he review it? And yeah, what I'm trying to say here is just don't trust, don't take somebody at their word. Like, yeah, it's good, send it. Um, do your due diligence, right? So also, my like, I had no feedback on my projects at whatsoever at all. Like, nothing. Like, no. Like, you have to fill your. Uh, there were different forms that you have to fill, and people review. People from my app academy review your um, projects, your capstone project, and provide you with guidance here's good, here's bad, here's better, here's what can we improve and stuff like that. Mine, my form was blank, nothing there. Uh, no feedback, it was not reviewed, it just was blank. Um, other, I asked other students and they were, they were getting feedback, I was not getting feedback. And one thing that I, I think it was the case, it was because I was, um, let's say an experienced pe person who already had software engineering uh, experience. And I was just overlooked. I think this is the, the best uh, that I can come up with, like the best excuse, let's say, because they knew that I know how to code. I won't waste time on reviewing her. Or um, because I have experience, I won't, I won't get that coaching that is needed. Um, it will be the meetings that we had. It will be just kind of status meetings, as I said. Another thing that I will I will try to get coaching. I will say, look, I know how to code. The problem that I'm having is to sell my skills. I'm I'm kind of sucking at selling my skills. It doesn't feel right. I f it feels that like I'm bragging and stuff like that. And my coach will say, oh, I think you should talk with this person. She's really good at Pepe helping you with this and that and. Um, what um, will happen? He's like, I will reach out to her. I will ask her to uh, to work with you. And it's like, okay, I will do that. Um, I'll I'll wait for 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 that to happen. And next time we like my past week, we will meet because he was not around, or I don't know what was going on. Nothing was that we will meet. Let's say three weeks from then, and I'll ask what it is. And it's like, oh yeah, I will reach out to her. So. There will, be, there will be things that will be promised but won't be um, followed up on or may make them happen. It, they were just kind of promises, I would say. So overall, I don't know if it was my case, but honestly, I was overlooked because of my experience. And that is not okay from my view because I was paying the full price, right? I'm paying the entire price. And if they were told, would tell me, it's like, oh, you already have experience, you don't need coaching, let's give you a discount or something like that because I'm paying for something and I'm not getting that. And it should not matter to the coaches or to App Academy if a person already has experience or not, if they're already paying for something and they need coaching, right? Um, so that is something that, um, something that is, it was not definitely okay with me. So, as I mentioned, the contract, I don't think it's dated. I need to double check again, but you have to apply to 40 jobs every week. And trust me, applying to a job is not as easy as it'd be. And as we know, for technical interviews, a lot of times you have to solve data structures and algorithms or use 
data structures and algorithms in your interviews. And I think we had like one day that we did that. And in the curriculum, you do kind of for one day data structure and algorithms, maximum two, and then you're supposed to pass your interviews. So what I'm trying to say here, and I believe why a lot of people are getting jobs, this is my view, it's what happens not during the bootcamp, but what happens after the bootcamp. A lot of people, the students who graduated, they have to apply to 40 jobs and they have to continue to, to, uh, to get to the level where they can pass the interview. And at that time, a lot of students, or all the students, are doing data structures, are doing algorithms. And at that time, you are by yourself. So I would say that the majority of people who actually got the job, it's due to the fact, the preparation that they did after the boot camp, the, the time where they are applying for jobs, and the effort and the time they are putting into wrapping their head around data structures, wrapping their head around algorithms and stuff like that. So I, I credit that part to actually getting a job. So the majority of, of, uh, of you getting to learn to code is happening by yourself. And you do have support. Let me be clear. You, there is, I believe there is uh, like 12 hours a day support, like from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You have a person who uh, can... Uh, kind of provide technical support for you and sadly the case is that maybe that person is super <laughs> capable to help and, and uh, guide students on questions on let's say javascript or something like that but when it came to python when it came to docker because i really felt that i'm weak on that those ones i wanted to understand them i will reach out to the support and he won't be able to to help and the situation was that that support, he it was also a fellow student of App Academy and he finished a, a cohort where I think it was, uh, they learned JavaScript or maybe Ruby on Rails, I don't know. But the thing it was that, yeah, you have support, but truly is not accommodated for the stack that you learned. So, so before you say like, oh, you should not go to support or something like that, you should first Google. I was Googling things and I was getting into weird situations where I had the back end was Python, the front end was uh, React and um, they were not integrating like full stack, like they were not integrating well, like the information was not uh, following through the pipeline correctly from from React to Flask, I believe it was what I was using. And, I googled the heck out of that and was not able to find what was going on and uh, yeah I was reaching out for help and they were not able to help, to help. So this is video gets really long so I'll try to uh, continue with what else I wanted to do. Um, well, one thing that definitely I need to say and talk about is the fact that how did people get good reviews and how did I end up actually at App Academy? I was researching boot camps and I came across a video that a real tough candy, I believe it's her channel, um, was talking and reviewing different boot camps. And uh, in one of her videos, there was that she was talking with Curtis. He was, I think, one of the people who put together the curriculum. Uh, he was the VP at uh, App Academy, if I recall correctly. And I was really impressed by how he presented the information, how he answered questions, and like, okay, this, a this is a really qualified person. I can tell he's really good, and if he's putting a curriculum together, it must be awesome. So that's how I was introduced to App Academy. I started to review it. I started to look at uh, reviews, and I was amazed by like how how many uh, reviews there were actually stellar, like five stars. And like from all the, the boot camps, App Academy had the best reviews there. So I ended up getting into App Academy. Now I know this better, I would say. So maybe those reviews were actually from App Academy in person and not the online um, program. I have no idea, but that's my assumption. How do you get those reviews? When you graduate your bootcamp or cohort, like when you're done with the curriculum, you receive an email from App Academy saying, um, I don't remember exactly what it says, but basically if you leave a review, 
you will get a t-shirt or a hoodie, App Academy t-shirt or hoodie or something like that. I didn't get any of those because I didn't want to leave a review uh, because I was, I, I felt really disappointed and I, um, I just didn't do it. But the thing is, it feels like uh, bribing, like leave me a review, you will get a t-shirt or a hoodie, whatever it is. And the thing is that even though you, let's say, leave kind of an anonymous uh, review. And the reality is not anonymous because you have to screenshot or, uh, yeah, you have to screenshot and provide proof that you actually left a review. So it's kind of naturally, you don't want to to leave a bad review uh, because somebody will review it or something like that. And there's also that fear of, uh, I don't know what is the word, but the fear of them uh, retaliating. I think that's the word, a retaliation, uh, that you might be and not being, not getting this the support that you're supposed to get, or being kicked out of the program and being forced to pay the the premium immediately and stuff like that. There is a certain at least I w I had that uh, feeling at certain level, and I just didn't do it, and. Yeah, um, those, I think that's how all the, the reviews or the majority of the reviews were gotten. I, um, the sad situation is that this is not only my, my feeling about the experience and how we got, there were other people in our current, like in my cohort that felt the same way or maybe worse. Um, and they were really disappointed. And there were people from other cohorts who felt exactly the same, and I think they actually left honest reviews about how they felt. The gist is that the only good thing it was that, in my opinion, it was the accountability that I had to provide. I wanted to make sure that I follow through, that I'm not spending way too much time on something that is uh, not necessary, because I do have the tendency of when I'm learning something by myself, um, that I will get into the rabbit hole of trying to understand something or something will be associated with something else and I'll get derailed to that thing and trying to understand it and just like not getting back, kind of getting lost and through the sea of the information and the knowledge that I'm looking for and kind of having a guided structure, it's something that I was looking for. Um, so the structure, the accountability, and it's kind of a forcing function also at the same time to kind of get something done in a particular amount of time. So that, those were the only good things for me. Um, but I don't think um, that that part is worth the amount of money that I paid for everything. So here I am. Um, <laughs> it's it's a long a long feedback, a long time that I felt all of this inside, and actually I feel a little bit better that I'm putting that out out there, hoping that if you are in a similar situation or anybody else um, by similar situation I mean if you are in a place where you want to learn to code or want to learn a new stack or want to be a web developer or something like that and you you are considering to to join a bootcamp or are you thinking should I be a self-taught uh, developer or should I go to college like when you're exploring like what do you do to to get to the point of being a software engineer and exploring your options hopefully um, me sharing this information there and putting it there, making it available for people to see will be helpful and it will at least prompt you to ask the right questions. As like if you are exploring boot camps, you should ask like who will be teaching the boot camp? Are they students who just went through the boot camp? How many times did they team like they did their program? Like how many cohorts they did they led? Um, like did they learn exactly the same curriculum that they will be teaching or a different curriculum? Um, what is the structure of the, the day in a bootcamp, right? Like, am I watching videos or do I have a real instructor that I can ask questions? Like, um, all of this, this information, I hope that will help you form the questions that you need to ask the, the bootcamp representatives or things that you should be aware of and take in consideration when you are weighing the pros and cons of doing a bootcamp to learn to code or pros and cons for being a self-taught developer or going to college. So just my, my hope here is not 
to to put up academy into a bad light because maybe as i said previously maybe the stars aligned and my experience was like that i want to bring awareness and transparency of what's going on and for you to be aware of that and if by any chance app academy is watching this hopefully you take all of what i shared of what was my experience and the experience of my cohort mates uh Something that it's a feedback for you to take in consideration and look at what can you improve, what can you do better. Because on a weekly basis, the majority of us were leaving like what went well, what didn't go well and stuff like that. Actually, like on that, like I don't think there was like what didn't go well. Like the question was like, um, what was one good thing that the TA did today? And it's kind of the question itself, it's forcing you to, to provide something good. They did, they were like, um, there was like, now what didn't go well? Like for me, like week by week, things were getting worse and worse. And me and other cohort mates were leaving honest feedbacks of what's going on. The, the, the TAs who are not able to teach, they are not able to answer questions without confusing us more. We are providing those feedbacks, but nothing was happening. Like it was nothing like, and it, I believe that those feedbacks were not going to the management team or whatever team that should look at um, those. Those were going to the instructors who, like, I mean, the TAs and who were like looking at the feedback that, from the students um, that they were trying to teach. And I think that was one thing that was discouraging them also. And like, so okay, I will stop there because this video is insanely long. So. Hopefully you will find guidance and clarity and what can you expect from a bootcamp. So I don't think this is probably specific to App Academy. I'm sure there are benefits and disadvantages in any bootcamp. So for you, if you're considering this, be aware of this, be aware about that and ask yourself, what am I paying for? Am I paying for somebody to be just there for me uh, to for me to watch a video, get some information, and then when I have questions or I want to clarify what the person said in the video, ask a TA and the TA not knowing what to say yes or no, like, do you want to pay for that? Or do you want to pay for being accountable and following through? And I don't know, like, just be clear with what you want to get out of the bootcamp and clearly understand what are your expectations and from your expectations kind of it will be easier to you to compile of lists uh, of qu a list of questions that you should get your answer to before you join a bootcamp so i'll stop the run there um, if you find this video valuable make sure to like it and definitely share this with multiple other people who are considering to getting into code who are considering to get into bootcamp because i truly believe this it's important to to know and to be aware of um because i definitely would have appreciated to have this information before i started and trust me i did an extensive review or research before i decided which uh, bootcamp to join sadly i didn't find anything like this so hopefully with you sharing and you liking this video more people can see it more people can be aware of what is it really like to do a bootcamp let's say online bootcamp to learn to code these days thank you